Good speech. The Honourable Peter Dunn. Speaker, I want to begin by expressing my regret at the circumstances that led to the resignation earlier today of the Honourable Darren Hughes as a Member of Parliament and to wish him well for his future. Mr Speaker, I feel a little bit like the gap between the two opposing forces at this stage because I don't want to join the debate that has been taking place. I want to talk instead about a significant announcement made earlier today that will have vast positive implications for the recreational hunting sector in New Zealand. And I want to talk in particular about the decision to establish as a statutory body a new Game Animal Council. Mr Speaker, this was born out of two confidence and supply agreements by United Future with both the previous government and the current government and is the end of a long progression of events which have had a very positive outcome. And I want to acknowledge at the outset the four Ministers of Conservation under both governments and a variety of other people who have played a role in bringing things to the stage that they are today, in particular the Hon. Margaret Austin, who chaired the original uh, consultation panel established in 2006 for the work that she did, Gary Ottman, who had chaired the establishment committee that was set up after the 2008 election to oversee the development of the Council. Uh, what we have now, sir, is probably the most significant development for recreational hunting in New Zealand since the passage of the Wild Animal Control Act over 30 years ago. And indeed, I've had some people say to me that the completion of this exercise is really the culmination of work that was underway at the time that Fish and Game was established as a statutory body in 1990. Mr Speaker, what we will now see is a process whereby deer, chamois, tar and pigs will be taken out of the status of being pests and treated as game animals and they will therefore be able to come within the ambit of the Game Animal Council managed as such. And the good news is that access to the Game Animal Resource will remain free for all New Zealand hunters. But we will finance the arrangement by a levy on the trophies taken by overseas hunters coming to this country, Mr Speaker, plus a very small uh, government contribution. This is a win-win because what it does is enable the growing hunting sector, both the commercial hunting sector, the recreational hunting sector and those that come from overseas to enjoy what they do best, to therefore help manage the resource which does have, in some people's eyes, a pest status. But also it is good news for our environment. And I welcome the support that we've received already for this initiative from a number of organisations who have an interest in this area. I'm very disappointed that Forest and Bird has chosen to take a negative and somewhat inaccurate view of things. This is not about charging New Zealand hunters for accessing a resource that they've always enjoyed. In fact, the price is going to be borne by those offshore hunters who come to this country. And what it's about is a better way of managing a resource. It's a better way of ensuring that those New Zealanders who like to go out and enjoy the great outdoors and to hunt those animals are able to do so in better surroundings. And we recognise the fact that there is a significant number of New Zealanders in that category. For instance, Mr Speaker, the original panel received over 4,500 submissions arguing for this very proposition. And all the consultations and the discussions and the meetings that have been held up and down the country with interested parties during the Establishment Committee process have shown very strong support for this initiative. So, Mr Speaker, today is the culmination of a process that's been underway for a very long time. And I think it marks a new dawn for those who enjoy that type of activity. It's part of the New Zealand heritage for many New Zealanders, and it will be welcomed up and down New Zealand. Because what it does once and for all is ensure that the interests of the recreational hunting sector and the burgeoning uh, commercial hunting role, plus some of the more exclusive lodges, are going to get a say in the policy and the management of those resources, as they've always argued for. Mr Speaker, this will lead to better information, it will lead to a much safer environment all round, and it will also ensure that we're able to deal with the fundamental problems that have led us to treat those animals as pests for so long. So, Mr Speaker, as I say, 
perhaps an oasis of calm between the political storm around us, it is timely to take the opportunity today to celebrate this positive initiative and to acknowledge the work of those that have brought it about and to wish the Council well for its future.